Rupert Prolins, welcome to the AICGS. It's good to have you back. I want to just chat briefly. We have a current crisis uh, going on with Syria, and I know you're well aware of the difficulty that the president is having here in the United States. Recently in St. Petersburg and then in Vilnius, Merkel was involved, the chancellor was involved with it, her European counterparts, and they came across with a very strong statement. Um, the problem that I see coming up now is one of making sure that we're all on the same page. I was a little concerned, I have to admit, that there might be another division in Europe like we experienced in 2003, but that doesn't seem to be the case now. Um, if things go forward and uh, there is going to be some solution to this problem, as there seems to be in the winds now at the moment, what is Germany's best contribution to dealing with this crisis in Syria, assuming that there can be some way to avoid a military attack? For Germany, uh, the Syrian crisis is for now more than three years uh, really in the focus. And uh, in our committee, I'm chairing the Foreign Affairs Committee, on nearly every second uh, meeting, we have been discussing the developments in this country because Syria is so important for the region and, of course, in itself also. And uh, we are now uh, seeing that from the beginning, when the demonstrations were peaceful, like uh, uh, the starts in, in, in other Arab countries, and they remained peaceful even when Assad started sh shooting exactly at some of the leading figures. And uh, in between, uh, there was also uh, armed resistance, and uh, we now see that the democratic Syrian opposition is caught between Assad and his brutality on the one side and the jihadists who came mostly from the outside fighting mm -hmm. against Assad uh, in the middle. And uh, the end of all this can only be a new conference, Geneva II, or call it as you, as you like, where we see all the conflicting parties, the neighboring countries, and of course, the big ones like United States, Europe might play a role. And uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the opposition is very much split. And here was all, all the years one of our efforts to help. We organized meetings for them. We tried to mediate. We tried to bring them to more common positions. Unfortunately, not as successful as we wanted to be. The second track was where we have areas where uh, the democratic uh, resistance is now controlling Syria. Germany is sending them aid and trying to help and enable them to get a good administration in these areas. Unfortunately, we see now that also uh, jihadis are challenging uh, the, re the rebels in the areas where they have won. Right. And, uh, of course, uh, we do a lot to help uh, uh, in the humanitarian field. Uh, you know, not only more than 100,000 people killed, hundreds of thousands uh, si seriously wounded, but also so many refugees, two million in neighboring countries. Who, uh, Jordan, for example. Jordan, Turkey, Turkey yeah. Lebanon. Right. Uh, Lebanon may be of the whole population, 20% are now refugees from Syria. It's an amazing number. And Germany, as the first European uh, Union member country, uh, said we will take 5,000 as a first step also to Europe. Mm -hmm. But we were very much engaged first to enable and help, especially Jordan, but also Lebanon, uh, to, uh, to manage uh, uh, these huge numbers of refugees and uh, NGOs from Germany with German money are trying uh, to be helpful. At the moment everybody is focused on the right answer to this uh, uh, terrible use of chemical weapons. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, uh, this, as uh, Chancellor Merkel put it, needs to get a strong answer. This cannot be uh, without consequences. Right. The question is, what want we to achieve with regard to chemical weapons, and what are and what are the means to, to, to achieve this? What do we want to achieve? That this will never be repeated, neither in Syria nor elsewhere in the world. What are the means? Um, there has been the discussion, and still is, in the United States, would be a military strike limited, aimed at whatever connected with chemical weapons, the right answer. The question is, can it be limited to that? You have the first strike in your hand, but uh, not the reaction. What happens afterwards? What happens afterwards? And there is, uh, uh, there is a saying that uh, it is not so, uh, so calculable. Mm. And if you have not the escalations dominance, if you have not the possibility to give to every reaction an even stronger one on your side, then it gets out of your hands. It's a spiral that... Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a bit doubtful that you have this kind of dominance in escalation given the facts on the ground and given also the, situ the present situation in Syria that some argue if you are kicking out Assad now who will who be takes over. who takes over and uh, so um, the present window of opportunity after uh, Kerry made this statement uh, if the chemical weapons are under national control right. soon and tight and verifiable, uh, then that could not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not see another strike mm -hmm. with chemical right. weapons, so this goal would, ha would be achieved. Mm -hmm. And of course we will support all the efforts to, to go from here to there. But uh, as we now hear mm -hmm. over the day, uh, now the Russians are coming with some additional uh, precautions. Yes, yeah. Of course, Assad will maybe play uh, play games, uh, so we cannot be sure that this works out. There is another idea in uh, our discussion. If we have the debate in the Security Council on the report of the UN inspectors, then it will be clear to everybody there has been a chemical attack. Mm -hmm. Then the Germans, the Americans, the French, the Brits, many others will say, we have evidence and we are sure it was Assad and his regime who did this. Probably, at least this is my expectation, the Russians will say, we have still doubts or even stronger, oppo will, will stronger oppose this kind of conclusion. And then one could say, okay, then the Security Council should uh, hand over to the International Criminal Court for investigating who did it mm -hmm. and say we support your investigation as Security Council and bringing those who did it to Den Haag to the Criminal Court. This would also have, even if uh, uh, the investigations might take a long time and maybe would be not so successful, but the political signal that Russia and China are saying the use of chemical weapons is a war crime. We want to see the, those who did it in a court and punished would also have, in my view, a deterrent. There's one problem with that, yeah. and, and I <coughs> see uh, the point, I see where you're going. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is convincing the United States that in the end uh, we're going to take these guys to the ICC. We didn't sign on to the ICC. That's true. Yeah. You have this problem. There are some some legal problems I have seen uh, where the Russians could make yeah. and an, an, say uh, it doesn't fit really. Right. But it is also a political question. If the Russians, for instance, would do this then it is obvious that they are backing those who did it. Because you cannot say, yes, this happened. Right. I'm not convinced who did it, but I'm oppose, opposing everybody who tries to investigate. Right. 
And uh, I doubt that Russia would, uh, would risk this because uh, uh, Russia has uh, isolated itself in the Arab world while they are siding with Assad and his cruelties. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they are siding with people who are using chemical weapons, it is even in all over the world yeah. a big a big problem for Russia and therefore and for the United States yes I know you are but you have a, you are, you are not a signatory to no. the ICC that's true but you have agreed for instance that uh, Milosevic and the right. others are are uh, put on trial there the problem though here again <coughs> is this balance between um, uh, you know the uh, the carrot and the stick. <laughs> Uh, evidently, we need both in this world, right? Sure. And the question mark, I think, in many discussions here in Washington, yeah. as you well know, is why is it that we always have to use the stick? And why is it that, you know, when it comes to the, the hammer coming down, it's our hammer and nobody else's? I mean, that I, uh, what I want to do is just sort of uh, explore that question with you because one of my concerns is that, you know, as Europe continues to develop a common foreign policy. Yes, it's a common voice, and you need a common voice, but the question is what capacity stands behind that True. voice. <coughs> but look at the British discussion. I know. Makes it that much more problematic yeah. for us yeah. to know what we can expect. Yeah. yeah, maybe there is a different a different weighting of arguments. Can you, with a military strike, achieve what you want to achieve? We're debating that and, here. And yes, you are debating this here also. Right. And if you look at uh, the results, when we try to do it, or you try to do it exactly this way, it is mixed. I know. It is mixed. And therefore, it is not so convincing. I remember um, the Kosovo mm -hmm. campaign. And f a fortnight after the Kosovo campaign was finished, I was in the States, and I discussed with people in the, uh, <coughs> in the State Department and in the White House. And I was surprised when I heard from rather high-ranking people that they were very much, have been very much concerned about how long can we sustain the right. campaign, because right. public opinion was switching. Right. And uh, I was not aware that this was, even in the United States, so close. Mm -hmm. And if you take it to the Syrian problem, in Kosovo you had Srebrenica, and it was obvious who did it. Nobody disputed that. Here, Assad and Russia and others are trying to lie on that in a way that Assad was on the winning side. He mm -hmm. had no, it did not make sense for him to use chemical weapons, but it did make sense for the rebels to use chemical weapons because there was such a thing like a red line from the Americans, and if this red line is crossed, the Americans will join and will help the rebels. They were trying to trap them. So, mm. and this, in, in, in a world where public opinion counts so much mm. on our sustainability to stand a conflict through the end, mm -hmm. Uh, you have to take this also into account. Next point, and this is ambiguous. On the one hand, we might have a chance now to come also into more meaningful negotiations on the nuclear program with Iran yeah. after the elections. But on the other hand, we have also a red line. And if this red line in Syria doesn't mean anything, the Iranians might come to the conclusion, okay, now we have uh, a free ride. Right. On the other hand, when uh, the conflict in Syria turns even more heated, uh, it might also harm the chance to get into meaningful negotiations with the Iranians. It's very, very difficult answers. That's what you have a wonderful German <coughs> word, Wechselwirkung. Here. Yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, well, I mean, I think that one of the things that is of concern, and I say this also with, a, with, a, with, a, with an eye on the fact that you're having elections in Germany on the 22nd of September, um, is the fact, and I'm, I'm going to make it a fact, and you tell me if it is a fact, there is a consensus in Germany across most of your political party spectrum, with a couple of exceptions, um, that Germany's engagement is not questioned, 
um, it signs on to, in this case, mm -hmm. the Vilnius Accord, the Vilnius Statement. It, it is going to, it's proven its mettle, if you will, in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I think that's a 10-year mm -hmm. commitment mm -hmm. that is very impressive. The problem, I think, in this country over here, and I say this with an eye, again, on the elections, is that w can we expect anything to come out of the elections, regardless of who wins, that would change fundamentally the current parameters of German foreign policy when it comes to these crises? My answer in advance would be probably not, but you tell me if I'm wrong. No, you are right. Um, we have a broad consensus in, in these issues, uh, right. uh, of course, within the government, but also with the Social Democrats and with the Greens. The only uh, party which is more or less fundamentally disagreeing in many uh, issues on foreign affairs are mm -hmm. the left. Right. They are opposing uh, our European policy, they are opposing our NATO membership, and they have uh, ideas of uh, foreign policy uh, which, which would uh, very, very soon isolate Germany and are very dangerous. Um, we might have we might have an outcome of the elections where there is a temptation at least for the social democrats and greens because for them only for these two parties according to the present polls it will not be a sufficient majority majority um, and but together with the left it might work on on numbers on numbers uh, and there are within the Social Democratic Party some, and also within the Green Party some, who say better than Angela Merkel next time we try it with the left. I hope, no, wait, I, just, I hope this is, I hope this is not the majority uh, in, the, in the Social Democratic Party and not with the Greens and the uh, candidate Steinbrück has excluded this and we have many votes and I personally uh, would not put a question mark behind that from leading social democrats, but in in in, in the middle middle ranking uh, field and maybe some also in the top would say better with them than another another, another term four America. years with chance and and, and and there are also some social democrats who say the grand coalition was not very good for us as a party. Mm. And uh, if we do it again, uh, we might be below 20% afterwards, and therefore we could not. And so the best, of course, as a Christian Democrat, I would say, is we should not see a result which makes these temptations to the Social Democrats. And this means um, a result where without uh, the Christian Democrats there could be no government. And then we will see, uh, of course, we want to, to go again with the Liberals. But of course, we could also work together with the Social Democrats and maybe even with the Greens, because uh, the most uh, uh, dividing issues, energy policy or so, are now gone after our decisions with regard to nuclear energy. To Fukushima. So finally then, as I c it, let me just tick off a few things where I think uh, we will need Germany, regardless of who wins, mm -hmm. okay? Russia. Mm -hmm. We need to deal with how we um, confront Putin to some extent with his domestic problems and I think quite frankly his crackdown on minorities and we need to encourage Russia to get engaged in dealing with everything from Iran to missile defense right. and so right. forth. So we need you there because when the, Rus when the Russians look across Europe, the first city they see is it's Berlin. True. Okay. It's true. Number two, we need, we need you to stay with us. Uh, or in some capacity stay with us after the Afghanistan military pullout mm -hmm. because we can't just walk yeah. out of there. Yeah. We need you to continue to um, pressure or to deal with Iran's nuclear ambitions. Right. We, need you, right. we need you there. We need you to basically continue to what you're, you've been doing and that is to maintain some stability on the Eurozone front mm -hmm. because we have right. a vested interest right. in that. Right. And of course the spin-off of that is TTIP. And therefore, I think Germany would be an yeah. imp important leader, leader, I use that word advisedly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on getting TTIP pushed down the road mm -hmm. a bit. So those are five things. Yeah. Did I leave out anything that would be... No, uh, I, I, would, I would agree. And I would say, if you, you said, America, you need us in we these... In these if, yeah. But it's also in our interest to do it. Right. 
Uh, also Afghanistan because we have invested so much and uh, and therefore we have a commitment for the next 10 years. Right. We have discussed it in Parliament and there is an agreement that we would not leave Afghanistan alone. We would be engaged for the next 10 years, especially with foreign aid and development, but also with the military, uh, let's say, training programs. Uh, so this is, this is a done deal. And, um, and again, just to point this out, yeah. regardless of who wins the elections, that's a case. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. And, and uh, the uh, uh, Eurozone, there might be, of course, we, we might see a, a, a different economic policy from, from other parties. Uh, and this might also have an impact on, 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 uh, on German economy, on German strength, and then also uh, what we can do for Europe. Uh, so uh, uh, there might be differences with regard to the ability to do what you what you said, because I think, of course, that our way to deal with economics uh, is uh, for German economy and for our possibilities in Europe better. And um, <coughs> Russia, we have sometimes also an inner German debate how to see Russia. But even those who are putting more emphasis on, 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 on cooperation and playing a bit down the problems are agreeing that uh, we have many concerns about the inner Russian developments. Right. Uh, but it is in our interest that Russia will overcome them. And uh, therefore, this is the point. Iran, the same. We, we know that uh, for whatever reasons, uh, the Iranians uh, are also looking a bit more what we are doing and we could make use of it together in a consensus with the United States, with uh, France and Britain. Uh, maybe not, not sharing labor or good, doc, good cop, bad cop thing, but uh, in, a, in, a, in, in the right way yeah. to do it. <clears throat> and uh, uh, yes, and on the other hand, I would say uh, uh, we also need uh, the United States yeah. uh, engaged in world affairs, engaged in Asia. We need your engagement in Asia because uh, uh, Asia is um, um, a region without, without really security structures. We have arms races, we have many conflicts. And uh, I know from countries uh, in Asia how much they wish an American role, and mm. uh, hopefully you, you, uh, you can play it. But it's also in your interest that you do, mm. and therefore hopefully you will. And uh, so I think we have a very solid basis. And if we are able uh, to, to get TAFTA done. TTIP. TTIP, TTIP, sorry, mm. TTIP, uh, TTIP done, uh, then I think uh, we have really an achievement because it will connect our economies even stronger. And what is, in my view, at least as important, the standards on which we are doing that will have a huge impact on world economy because half of the world uh, gross uh, economic product uh, right. is produced either in the United States or, or in, in Europe. Europe. Yeah. And this will also lead to uh, more free trade, fairer trade all over the world. And this is a benefit for all the countries in the world. And experts therefore say that uh, also China and others, also smaller countries, will gain if we get this uh, TTIP done. I think we set standards which uh, can be uh, global. And that yeah. would be something that would be magnetic. Real quick, uh, 20 years in the Bundestag, coming to an end. Um, we talk about needing, uh, our two countries needing each other. I don't care what happens after September 22nd, we're still going to need you occasionally here to talk with us. And we, Thank you, know you very much. Always welcome, right? Thank you very much. Thank you.